Awesome. Hi. Welcome, everyone. My name is Kim Havens. I'm the event manager here at An Unlikely Story. Uh-oh. I'm going to mute somebody because I think somebody has another window open in the background so that's creating an echo. So we'll figure that out when I bring everyone on screen. I'm so excited to introduce you to your new favorite graphic novel series, Pause on the actual release date of the first in the series, which is Gabby Gets It Together. Today, I'm delighted to introduce PAUSE co-creators, Michelle Asarasakorn and Nathan Fairbairn, who will be joined by Eisner Award-winning creator, Faith Aaron Hicks. Before we get started, I have a couple of tech pointers. If you happen to lose your connection or your video, just exit out of your browser and just jump right back in, or you can refresh your page. Sometimes people tend to disappear. They're not really gone. We'll have a Q&A towards the end of the event, so you can enter your questions in the Ask a Question box, which is right below, and then you can also upvote them so the most popular one will float to the top. Click on the green button right in the center, order your copy of Pause, Gabby Gets It Together, and Nathan and Michelle are signing book plates. So while supplies last, you will get a signed book plate. Michelle Asarasicorn, also known as M. Sassy K, is a colorist who's worked on comic book series such as Eisner-nominated Isola, Gotham Academy, and The Magnificent Ms. Marvel. Originally from Bangkok, Thailand, Michelle now calls Vancouver home, but also likes to travel the world working remotely as an artist. Pause is her debut as an illustrator with fellow local colorist Nathan Fairbairn. Nathan is a New York Times bestseller and Eisner-nominated creator who's worked as a colorist on iconic characters such as Spider-Man, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Scott Pilgrim. He's also co-creator, writer, and colorist of the graphic novel Lake of Fire. He started writing Paws as a way to share his passion of comics and storytelling with his daughter, Lily. Nathan lives and also works in Vancouver. Dynamic duo Michelle and Nathan created Pause, a middle grade graphic novel series about three friends, Gabby, Priya, and Mindy, who love animals, but they can't have pets. These three very different friends decide to start a dog walking business and hilarity ensues. I was telling them earlier, I was reading the book while working on the book floor earlier and just cracking up. You are going to love it. Leading their conversation this evening with Michelle and Nathan is Eisner Award-winning creator, Faith Erin Hicks. She also joins us from Vancouver. She is a writer and artist, and I highly recommend visiting her website. She's got some fantastic videos on creating comics. So without further ado, it is my great pleasure to introduce Michelle Asarasicorn, and Nathan Fairbairn. Now I'm going to unmute them. Ah, hello, and Kiki. Hello. And Kiko's Larry Your baby. <laughs> this is not my baby. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> How's the echo? Oh no. Yeah, that was our fault. We had an extra window open. Yeah, that was. Oh, okay. All right. Yep, we are. I'm all still. I, I'm still getting a double. Maybe try it without headphones. How's that? Without headphones. How's that? <laughs> that did not work. That did not work. Oh, now I hear it again. Um, but just to check, nobody else is getting an echo. No. no okay, so I don't hear my We're all good. Okay. Okay. Don't worry about it then. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Faith, and I'm very excited to be talking with, with Michelle and Nathan. I'm a big fan of their work. Um, I think they do wonderful work as cartoonists and colorists and writers. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to dive in and talk to you guys about pause. Um, so my initial question is, why comics? Why, why did you decide on this particular medium? What drew you to it? Why did you create a graphic novel together instead of writing a prose novel or doing a kid's book? anything like that. So yeah, why comics? Why, why comics as, as like my chosen <laughs> method of storytelling or this particular story? Oh yeah, just like what, what drew you to comics as a creative person? Why mm. did you decide to work in this particular art medium? Yeah. Uh, you wanna go first? Uh, sure, well, I was really inspired by 
the pace and the freedom that the viewer, the consumer gets to have while they're reading a comic versus um, an animated film or a movie. Um, it's kind of nice to be able to be pulled into a story with the art and hear the character's voice read in your own voice. And I thought that was kind of a great way to engage, in, engage an audience. I have been obsessed with comics my entire life, um, as long as I can remember, uh, since I discovered them. I think I was probably six or seven. Um, we just moved into an old farmhouse and I was exploring and I found on the back of a dusty shelf a, a cardboard box full of old Marvel comics. And uh, that was it, man. I was, uh, I was hooked and have been more or less obsessed with comics my whole life. So. I've always wanted to work in comics. I've always wanted to tell stories in the comics uh, medium. So yeah, uh, that's why I make comics. <laughs> I can't imagine doing anything else. Uh, this particular story uh, is our first, my first middle grade book. And uh, the reason I'm doing this one is, is because I had just finished um, Lake of Fire, which is like a sci-fi historical fiction, knights versus aliens. Um, Hollywood B movie from the 80s kind of uh, jam. Uh, I was really proud of it, but uh, I realized that I, you know, spent three years making this graphic novel that I couldn't let my kids read, and it was a <laughs> bummer. Because my kids are the most important thing to me, um, so I decided that my next book was going to be a, a middle grade book because at that time I had an eight-year-old daughter and a ten-year-old son, and my daughter especially was nuts for uh anything Raina Telgemeier uh mm -hmm. babysitters club uh she liked uh Victoria Jameson's book um Roller Girl um you know CC Bell um El Defo uh she just any middle grade book she she would read and I bought any book that I could find I um, bought her so many middle grade books and I I felt like at the time I'd read almost every middle grade graphic novel that was produced and uh, I, you know, I was lying there in bed with her reading books. And uh, one night I was like, eh, I could do this. <laughs> I, could do this. <laughs> I, I could be read a tell I read books this good. Surely I could make a book for my daughter that my daughter would be interested in. So that's why I made, like, I uh, started working on, on pause. And now she's a 14 year old. Cause it yeah, takes Yeah, so I read long. like a fire Honestly, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs> she's she still likes but it, yeah it's like a fire is not for kids <laughs> no although my, my son i think was 10 or 11 and he snuck a copy off of my uh my bookshelf and read it and i was kind of proud that he'd uh, he'd done that <laughs> um but yeah yeah that's that's why comics do you guys remember the very first comic or graphic novel you read as a kid um, I, because I grew up in Thailand, um, my school library had like Garfield, basic comic strips like Peanuts and Garfield, I think, but I picked mm -hmm. up Garfield because I found it really like the humor was so good. And I remember bonding with my dad over that because he thought it was the funniest thing <laughs> to read. Um, but yeah, that was my, my sort of, um, look, first look into comic strips. And then when I moved to Canada, I think my first North American comic was Fables, mm. and that blew okay. my mind. Yeah, and uh, mm. but I read manga before that, just nothing ever in in English, and I never, I didn't know there was a whole world out there apart from manga. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I love I love manga a lot, but um, I actually didn't get into it until until I was an adult. So like discovering that world and the world of comics outside of North American comics was was really eye-opening to me. It was like, like the, the visual language is so different yeah. from North American comics. It's really yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Nathan, did you read, did you read Tintin growing up? Like you're Canadian, right? Like you grew up in Canada? I did. Yeah. Yeah. What? No, it was funny when she was saying Garfield, like probably yeah. Garfield was the first comic that I, I got into like, yeah. when I was in kindergarten, like just learning how to read. It was my kid's first uh, comic as well. Like, oh, I, I remember wow. my son, Augustine, yeah. Um, you know, I, yeah. Yeah, 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 and so I, I when just recent, well, not recently, I guess, because he's, he's 16 years old, <laughs> but when he was first learning how to read, I, I bought him these Garfield anthologies that were like hundreds of pages long, and he had this insatiable appetite for Garfield, and I got 
quickly tired of reading Garfield to him for long stretches of time. And that's what became his impetus to learn how to read. Like, mm -hmm. I just couldn't yeah. read Garfield. And so he was like, well, I'm just going to have to learn how to read. And yeah, then like within, similar to me too. within like a month, yeah. he was like, well, yeah. just reading Garfield. Yeah. On his own. yeah. Cool. So there you go. Props to Jim. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like even now what I hear from librarians is that those collections of newspaper strips are, you know, circulated very highly at libraries among, among kids, you know, like we don't think necessarily think about newspaper strips when we think about like the first comics we read as a kid, but for many people, it was, it was their entry into, into the medium. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's really cool. Uh, Garfield is still popular. The best comic ever made is, is uh, Calvin and Hobbes. Like, yeah. Calvin and Hobbes is great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, back favorite. in the day. Did you ever read um, For Better or For Worse? I really enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, that yeah, that was really good. Yeah. Too. yeah medium kid. And, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think Lynn Johnson actually lives, yeah. lives somewhere here in Vancouver as well. Yeah, she does. <laughs> I think she's on the island, isn't she? Or, yeah. Oh, maybe. I thought she lived in maybe north or west Vancouver, up where yeah. the giant, beautiful houses yeah. are. No. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those comics I assumed everybody around the world read because yeah. maybe a little you don't understand things are regional. Um, yeah. Have you heard of this comic no, show? I was <laughs> like, I'm making a mental note, like check yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah. Great cartoon. Yeah. Like I, I remember um, being really shocked by the fact that it was set in Canada. Like as a Canadian kid reading comics, I, I'd just never seen that before, like a, a, mm. a comic specifically. And I remember references to towns in Ontario, like Oakville, which were very close to where the area where I grew up. Um, let me actually ask you guys about uh, the setting of Paws, because that's something that I really enjoyed when I read it. Um, it is actually set in Vancouver in like specific East, East Van locations, right? Like I'm not super familiar with the East part of the city, um, <laughs> but can I ask why you decided to do that? Like really set it in a specific Canadian city? Um, <laughs> <laughs> on, on Nathan's, on Nathan's Yeah, I mean, I guess there's a, a couple reasons for that. Um, one is um, at the time I, I was coming up with this idea, I had recently finished coloring the whole Scott Pilgrim series of right. comics by Brian Lee O'Malley, which is mm -hmm. very set in Toronto. And, you know, the battles take place in very specific places, the Toronto Reference Library, you know, uh, Sneaky, is it Sneaky Deeds? There's a bar Sneaky they go Deeds. to. Yeah. I actually yeah. yeah. Comic in college as well that I was like, wait, this is where I am right, right. now. And yeah. I, it's in my neighborhood. So that was super yeah. cool. And I, at the time I have been to Toronto since, but when I was coming that, I had never been to Toronto. So I had friends in Toronto, like, there's this one scene where like uh, Ramona Flowers and Knife Chow have like an argument in like the bathroom at Sneaky D's. And I actually sent a friend in to take photos of the women's bathroom. <laughs> and it was, it was oh. a guy. I only have a guy friend in Toronto. And so he he was like standing outside. He's like, hello, is anybody in there? <laughs> I need oh, in no. for reference. And he did. He went in and it was great that he did because there was a very distinctive painting scene it's like red and yellow on one wall and the stalls are like blue and i never would have nailed that if i hadn't said so anyway that that i had that in mind like that was a really great thing to do to ground the story to, to yeah. make it, people can recognize um people go on walking tours of toronto where they they identify scott pilgrim landmarks from the books um mm. so that was really fun and i wanted to represent an actual place that i knew um and the book was for my daughter and my daughter, you know, she was eight or nine when I was writing it, and eight or nine year olds are very literal, and they, you know, <laughs> they want to see the exact things that they know and recognize. And so I was like, well, I'll just, I'll just set everything in where we live. So Gabby's uh, townhouse is our townhouse. Her school is our school, except I've changed the name of the school. Right, the name of the, the, oh, name okay. of the school right. that she actually went to was Charles Dickens, but oh. there's too many schools named after dudes as it is. And also it felt a little weird to put an actual school name. So I changed it to Charlotte Bronte uh, Elementary School, but everything else is more or less an actual place in Vancouver. And we just happened to live in the same neighborhood. That was the other thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was, I was going to ask Michelle, did you like go to these specific areas and like take No, not photos? at all. No. <laughs> no, it was just places I would visit frequently anyway, like Trout Lake okay. or just well, even, um, well, some of the restaurants and the, well, I guess the school I never visited because right. I didn't have kids at the time. <laughs> but yeah, it was all in the general area I walked all the time. Yeah. Oh, the places she recognized. Yeah. Yeah. 
Nice. Yeah, it was it was just so cool to see, and I, I feel like it really gave the story and the characters like a, a, a I don't know, a specificity of setting that, that was really quite wonderful. Uh, if I can ask maybe um, not a, a salty question, but uh, were you encouraged or discouraged by your American publisher to set it in Canada? Like, was it, was it okay with your publisher? There was a question. Yeah, was there? There was a question. Was a question mark. Would it be okay to make this book set in any town in North America? You yeah. know, like, yeah. just not think about where it was. And, but they were, they were super cool when we said, okay. well, it, was, awesome. it was created this way. And it's kind mm -hmm. of, to us, it's really important and it helps us ground the story. And, uh, and I think, you know, I think kids are fine with it. Like, I don't yeah, know. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> I hope I, they are. <laughs> yeah. I think we've kept it pretty, it was, they're just locations, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of relatable no matter what. Yeah. 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 And, I mean, and the, the neighborhood so where, engaging. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, but well, the neighborhood where we lived was, it, it's this wonderfully diverse kind of neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of diversity in the book um, and mm. a lot of representation of, of different, you know, ethnicities and types of families and uh, types of mm. jobs. And, uh, you know, East Van is a very kind of uh, eclectic uh, melting pot of places. And, uh, and so that's reflected in the book. And, yeah, it, it just felt like it couldn't be anywhere else. Like, I don't know any other places. <laughs> I don't travel a lot. I don't know what neighborhood I could have set that in where it, it would have felt like an actual place. Yeah. Right? yeah. And I think it does feel like it's real because it is real. Like, yeah. These, these, you know, that's that's what people are like and, and what the place is like. And, you know, I'm not that much of a guy. I don't have that good imagination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm you, just you my daughter. It. <laughs> yeah, you heard it, heard it here, guys. You don't need that much of an imagination to be a comic book author. <laughs> you, have a good, you need to be a good observer, you know? Right, yeah. Just follow I agree your that. daughter around with a, with a notebook. <laughs> oh, After so all, that, that, that is, uh, that's my, that's another question um, that I, I find gets asked when I get the opportunity to talk to kids, especially, is there anyone in this book that is based on you or perhaps based on people you know? I mean, Nathan, you've already mentioned that Gabby is based on your daughter. Michelle, is there anyone that you drew specifically <laughs> I, to look uh, like you? <laughs> yeah, I stuck myself in there actually at towards the end of the oh, book. Okay. I was one of the, what would you call it? Like the deli store clerk or whatever. Oh, nice. And nice. I had a mullet at the time because I was growing out my pixie cut. And so I gave myself this cool mullet. <laughs> yeah. I got to find it. Oh, there let's she is. Let's see it. Yeah, let's see it. Yeah. Pull it up to the camera. There she is. <laughs> oh, there she is. So cute. Yeah, right yeah. at the end of the book. And I think I, I may have snuck in a couple of you did characters. You but snuck I, me in here somewhere. Yeah, I did. It was you pushing Lily on the swing. That is true. Yeah. I don't know where it is, though. I think it's uh, past. Oh, there. <laughs> There's me. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, I recognize you. Aw. Yeah. I, I find that so fun, you know, when authors slip in little little Easter eggs like that. Oh, and here's a question. Are there any pets in the book? Any of the dogs that are based on real life dogs? Does Pickle exist in real life? I wish. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's one dog. So when I when I was a boy, my my folks had a Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever uh, named Oh, Ross. lovely. Uh, mm -hmm beautiful dog and uh loved her to bits and so there is there's this is this is roxy this is my actual child oh yes yes <laughs> okay. yeah the rest are all dogs <laughs> just dogs yeah just yeah dogs. i don't have any experience with dogs so none of the none of the dogs are from my 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 childhood or anything mm -hmm. well, you yeah you can really kind of well. connect with, with the, the characters because you you weren't able to have yeah pets, right? yeah actually that was what was a very um appealing point for me was like hey this was my childhood story i wasn't allowed to have pets and i had all sorts of other random pets like smaller pets but never a dog or a cat did you have a prairie oh, really? i did have a prairie dog i didn't know you could have a prairie. i know i didn't know either I don't was, know. That, was that here in canada or was that, no, in, that was in, uh, bangkok, Singapore? in bangkok yeah that was in thailand it was so oh, random <laughs> yeah are are prairie dogs native to that that country or no not at all <laughs> you just randomly found a prairie dog that's hilarious that <laughs> prairie dog was an exotic pet for you yeah she was like it's a dog and i'm like it's a prairie dog 
it's it's a like, kind of dog. It's got dogs in the, it's because it barks apparently. Really? Yeah, they named it that because it has a it oh. has a distinguished bark, and so they named it a prairie dog. I did not oh know gosh. that. <laughs> yeah, they had them on the farm when I was growing up. They were not pets. Oh. Yeah. So was it for Michelle, Michelle, for, for you, was it just a case of um, you didn't live in an environment where you could have pets or was your family allergic the way? It was, um, it was a bit of everything. Was it Mindy's? Oh, a bit of everything. Yeah. It was actually a bit of everything. Well, apart from, um, well, I guess because her apartment did allow pets and Gabby's dad was a meat freak, which wasn't really the case for my family, but it was definitely a situation of allergies and location. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was a big I was a big animal lover as a kid. I did have a dog um, when I got old enough to be responsible for it, but I loved animals. And you, you, were, a, a, you were a horse girl, weren't you? Yeah, I was a horse girl. Yeah, I was a big horse girl. And, and I when was graphic, no, I have, title, uh, come out? Right? <laughs> August. I have a middle grade graphic novel about being a horse girl coming. It out looks so good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, all the horse girls out there. Also, Horses are a right. nightmare for most artists, and for you. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah, it is fun to be honest. There's uh there is a, a logic to their anatomy. To be honest, mm -hmm. I find dogs more difficult to draw. Uh Michelle, I just want to say your your dog drawings in paws were just absolutely incredible. Like Pickles in particular was a huge favorite of mine. Just the way you drew oh my his, god, like the do laps, the flappiness of it. He is the hardest ever to draw when oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she asked me to write her out of the second book because yeah, she doesn't like, want to draw her anymore. Draw no, her. Pickles! <laughs> oh, so oh, so sad. Aw, Pickles. <laughs> that means so oh, you're much. welcome. No, no, I and, I and like I'm always blown away by cartoonists who can who can do dogs in particular because I, yeah, I just, I don't know, like I grew up drawing horses, so I am more familiar with their anatomy, but dogs, dogs just elude me. I don't know. It's like, the challenge of being an artist where it's like you get really good at drawing one specific thing but not necessarily everything <laughs> so yeah um anyway let's uh let's get back to um oh okay let's talk a little bit about um making comics um so you guys are both professional cartoonists or professionals in the comic book industry um when uh, and, and you work full time in comics. Um, so getting published, getting your work out there, it's a mix of like hard work, talent, thick skin and luck. Um, was there someone in your life who really encouraged you, allowed you to get your first big break? Or uh, was it just nose to the grindstone? It was all you. Um, uh, well, for me, I guess the most encouraging person would be my partner, uh, who's also an artist in the animation industry, and nice. he's always, <laughs> he has, <laughs> I, I know, his office, <laughs> he has always, um, uh, was very encouraging with how I drew, even though I graduated and I pursued a career in painting, um, okay. but also the first person who really gave me a big break was Carl Kershaw, who was a favorite oh, yes. artist of mine growing up. And then I met him at a convention and told him that, hey, I was interested in painting backgrounds for his comics if anything ever came up. And he actually emailed me back months later to start on Gotham Academy, who was in need of um, a background painter at the time. So that was oh, so welcome. crazy cool that that had happened. And that sort of launched my career into coloring. And then I so met Nathan, who's like, draw my comic. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, maybe, I guess. I guess. Thank you. <laughs> so that was actually fairly recently, like uh, Gotham Academy and Isola. Uh, I love Isola, by the way, though. And, and both of them, actually, I think are quite wonderful. I think oh. Gotham Academy was 2016. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. it was later. Um, my dates are all in mom brain and right now <laughs> but um yeah it was relatively recent i was in animation and games before moving into comics yeah right yeah i feel like that's a a fairly typical um not typical story but uh, i do find a lot of people who have that crossover yeah, skill, yeah you know where it's like you work in animation or games and then potentially transition into comics or vice versa so yeah, yeah i meet a lot of a, a lot of people who work in both fields and what about you nathan um, first person to give me a break. Uh, oh, okay. So, um, when I decided to get into comics, there's a little preamble first, but, um, 
uh, I'd always kind of drawn in university. I drew a, a comic strip in the paper for the six years it took me to get my undergrad degree. Um, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, two of those years I took off to actually work at the student paper as an editor. But anyway, I always drawn for the paper, political cartoons, that kind of stuff. But uh, I wanted to get into comics, but I kind of figured my drawing skills weren't, uh, it would take longer to get my drawing skills up to a professional level than my coloring skills. And mm. so I started um, just working on my coloring portfolio, thinking I'd get my foot in the door that way and then work my mm. way up the ladder. Um, and so, yeah, this was during the age of the message board when the message board was, was the king yes. of the internet. Yeah, and there was a message board for everything, like whatever niche thing you're into, there was a board for it. And there was a message board for comic book coloring. Uh, and it was like just all the like past Eisner award winning comic book colors, like Laura Martin, um, you know, Matt Hollingsworth, Dave McKay, mm -hmm. all these giants of comic book colors. We were just hanging out there because there was nowhere else to hang out on the internet. And I would, oh, yeah, you taking her? Yeah, you taking my baby? Sorry. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, oh, so the, the I, would just, I would just like take line art I found on the internet and color it and post mm -hmm. it and, and get criticism and feedback. And so all of those colorists were so generous with their time and uh, like just giving me a master class on how to do their job. Um, and I was just a sponge. Um, I just, you know, every day I would color something new and then post it and then go to work. I was working as a teacher at the time. Um, and then I'd come home and check my thread and, and see, you know, who was commenting on it. And I did that for, I guess it was a couple of years. And then I got a comment one day from a guy named Timothy Green, who at the time was drawing for DC Comics. Um, and he didn't really like the colors that he had at the time. And he's like, hey, would you be interested in trying out for me? I've got this new series we're going to launch over at Marvel called Star-Lord. I didn't even know who Star-Lord was at the time. <laughs> like the Nobody did before the movie. No. <laughs> no, it's like some 1970s kind of Jim Starlin weirdness. Um, yeah. And so I was like, sure i'll i'll do it um and uh yeah so i did up a couple samples and uh, it was a real kind of gut check at that moment because he had sent me some of his own coloring on his own art and i didn't like it <laughs> oh, I was like, no. so what do i do do i just try to do what he does himself or do i do what i would do with this art kind of thing yeah and uh, and i i decided i'd be miserable if i was trying to do what he did and so i just uh -huh. did my own thing and he loved it and uh and uh it was yeah and that was it i uh, he got me a job at marvel i don't want to say like the next day but it was pretty you know he basically went to the editor and said i've got i've got my colors this is the guy and uh, i didn't have to do a, any trials or anything they just looked at my portfolio and yeah and then i started wow. coloring and uh I colored, I colored a lot of comic books <laughs> before i finally climbed that ladder up to the point where i was uh, able to, to to write comics yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that's another question. Oh, actually, uh, someone asked a question for uh, Michelle about mm -hmm. coloring. Oh, where did it go? Oh, here we go. So here's the question. Michelle, I'm a huge fan of your coloring work on Isola and Gotham Academy, as am I. Oh, thank you. What was it like? What, uh, this question is from from Jay. What was it like working on those books? And what was what transferable skills did you pick up that helped you with pause? Oh, wait, what was the first question I was focusing oh, on? Sorry. <laughs> uh, so basically, they're just saying that uh, they really enjoyed your work on Isola and Gotham Academy. Yeah, and then the question yeah. is, what was it like working on those books? Uh, and what what skills did you pick up that ha helped you with pause What skills on those books? I see. Um, well, it was really fun working with you know your your hero and um the team i met brendan and becky who are amazing mm -hmm. as well and uh it's just the i guess what i learned was it was such an organic process i had a lot of freedom and because they are stories that were created without any background history related to it um mm -hmm. it was a great sort of uh there was just so much freedom. I could play around with aesthetic and the style I want to color in. And they were all very receptive and encouraging of whatever I wanted to do. In terms of uh, what it brought to pause, I would say just the expectation of the timeline and the process and the collaboration nature of 
a whole uh, book in the making. So yeah, that's about <laughs> that's about all I can say about it. <laughs> I mean, that's a that's a big deal because um, I feel like learning to work with people and learning to collaborate is, is a really important and meet deadlines is a yeah, very important yeah. part of comics. And yeah. um, I feel like it's something that doesn't get mentioned enough. It's like, you know, if you want this to be your job, you need to work at a certain level of professionalism, both your artistic professionalism and then also your professionalism working with your collaborators. So yeah, yeah. I think that's- And I think also the, the biggest difference is too that um, I realized after taking on other jobs that not every collaboration is the same. And it's because I mm -hmm. knew, I knew when I met Carl and then I met Brendan as well, it was a lot more familiar and friendly. And so we felt more of a, a unified team in terms of our vision rather than just being assigned work and then finishing and then having the person look over and say, these are my notes. And so it was just a very friendly process that I, that I really loved. And I guess that was what inspired me to look for other creators to work with when I met Nathan and we mm. decided to work together I thought it was perfect because we were both in the same city this time in the same neighborhood yeah and it's it was so good yeah yeah that's awesome did your the fact that you're geographically quite close uh were you able to like meet in person on like a monthly basis and like well, before, the, and before the world went to oh, oh yes of course you know like <laughs> in the before yeah, times no, we the time. <laughs> yeah we meet at coffee shops to discuss the story oh that's lovely I bring my iPad and we look over scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've been working on this a while. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, Michelle and I met in person. Oh, we kind of knew each other a little bit on from the Twitter and, yeah. and stuff. And, and then she moved to Vancouver. And I think, you know, you were trying to replace some of what you'd lost from Toronto, that yeah. community of, of yeah. people in comics. Absolutely. And so you just, she just reached out to me and said, you want to get a cup of coffee? And I, I knew her, I knew her, her, her work, her color work, but I didn't really know anything about her as the person. So I did what you do. And I went and looked at her Instagram and like, oh, she's into rock climbing and, and traveling. <laughs> and she drew these adorable little travelogue cartoons. And I had been looking for a middle grade artist to work with for like uh... a year at that point. And I was like, okay, okay, be cool, be cool, man. <laughs> Like have like a couple solid hangs before you're like, do you want to do it? <laughs> I think I lasted like 20 minutes before yeah, it, it I ended think, the first cup of coffee. Yeah, I was like, like, you ever thought about drawing something, Michelle? And I I'm really like, like you. Oh. We get along well. Do you want to work together for the next four years on the same project? And she said, yes. I mean, she was a little. I wasn't sure. It took a long time for me to be like, can I draw this thing? Like there was, there were a couple of iterations I sent you, I yeah. think, that we couldn't mm -hmm. really, we, it wasn't. I mean, really... she'd never drawn yeah. comics before. So wait, Pause is your first full length graphic novel? Like, can you have, believe have that? You done... No, no, I can't. <laughs> like, it's so good. I have never like, drawn just... comics. Like, I'm no. not, not in that long. Uh, I think I drew 10 pages before that. And it was oh, wow. after I had talked to you mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, well, I need to practice. I need to find my style. And so I okay. did a 10 page anthology with um, the raid people at, in Toronto, my, my friends there. And that was when I was like, wow, this is a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so much work, it is a lot of work. So fun. And I could see myself really diving in and improving and learning. And I think that was just what got me really into it. Like the the possibility of it becoming something that I could really enjoy forever. Mm. So yeah. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. I mean I, I, I knew I'm from those away. personal cartoons that I saw of hers. I was like, <laughs> she can do this. <laughs> It's it's a lot more work than what she's done. Uh, <laughs> if she wants to do this, she can do this. And she did. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, that's incredible. Um, just to like, I guess, reveal something about myself. Like before I was ever published, I had done web comics and I had written and drawn a thousand pages of web comics before Whoa. I was ever published. Oh so like God. I had like this, I don't know, it just blows me away when people can just, but I needed to do it, you know, in order to develop my skill and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like, I, I'm just blown away that it's your first book, because it's it's so good. It's so delightful. Um, so I have a couple questions. One is from, uh, oh, yeah, and if anyone wants to ask a question, I'm going to continue talking to Nathan and Michelle. But uh, yeah, just throw a question in the little ask a question box if you have one. Um, so this is from Aria, age 11. 
and they say, I'm a big fan of Raina Telgemeier's books. I'm very excited to be here. I was wondering how you came up with the name Pause. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question, Mary. <laughs> Uh, it took a while. It was one of the last pieces to kind of fall into place. I had, I had the plot worked out. I had characters all figured out. I had the story arc. I knew what the conflicts were going to be. Um, but it was one of those details that was that just eluded me. I couldn't, I mm. couldn't grasp it. And I still remember well, so much where I was. Too. Yeah, you yeah. got to nail it, right? Yeah. I remember, I remember where I was. I was driving in the car. You know, I can tell you the crossroad I was at. <laughs> where it, it it just it came to me like I knew I wanted something short you know mm. something memorable I didn't want a long mm -hmm. you know there's this whole scene where they're trying to come up for a name for their for their group and you know one of them suggests you know the the Charlotte Bronte dog walker society or something <laughs> and just the idea of that taking up an entire cover of your book it was so I wanted it punchy and I wanted it but I I also wanted it to be like a terrible acronym that the girls had come up with and kind of forced <laughs> to, to spell a word. Right? So it's pretty awesome walkers. <laughs> so the, the S is just stolen from walkers. So they just kind of shoehorned, you know, it, they wanted it to spell pause. So yes, they, they clearly. Out, they that to happen. And that just made me laugh as I was driving. I was like, oh, oh I okay. Perfect. Yeah. Would have been like, yeah, yeah, of course, why not? Yeah. But no, it, yeah, was, I, it was just thinking about it a lot and finally it came. Yeah, I just find that coming up with a suitable name and then not only that, but a suitable name that your publisher likes is probably, I feel like that is one of the most difficult things with getting your book out there. I don't know. I feel like every book I've had published, yeah, the never name had any, just, they were always happy with Paul, weren't they? they it's a great title. Yeah. Book, like, the conception of the name yeah. was part of the story. And so mm -hmm. why? Like, why stray from that? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so Jill from Ohio says, will there be a pause too? Will this be a series? But yeah, there there is more coming, right? Yep. Currently in the making. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Currently in deadline uh, deadline crunch for finishing up the second book. Yeah. 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 How fun for you. Now, at least. Oh, at least, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll be done. We'll yeah, be done. we'll be done soon. We're we're aiming <laughs> to for the second book to come out in November this year. Oh, this year! Holy cow! Yeah, oh no. my gosh, that's so yeah. soon. No, that's 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 great. I mean, I'm very excited. If well, if that's, uh... we were supposed to be done a little while ago, but Michelle had Blame a baby. Um, <laughs> 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 so, yeah, they, sometimes. Sometimes real life, um, yeah. Life. Is, yeah. And, and Razorbill and and uh, our editor Chris Hernandez, uh, they've been very understanding and very flexible. Yeah. Um, you know, they know that it's it's difficult to work from home and and, and have a family and mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and in the midst of much. a pandemic as well. Yeah, yes. in the middle of a pandemic, yeah. like. You know, we, we sold a book and made a book and you made a person. I made a person all, all in the same time. All in the same time. <laughs> so we don't beat ourselves up about missing deadlines on the second book. But yeah. But it's, we're doing it's, our best. It's coming out. Yeah, it's happening. In November. We're going to make it happen. Yeah. Um, and it's great. Like I must say, it's we, we're really, really proud of the first book. Um, mm, this one's our favorite. We the think second, the second one's yeah, better. Yeah, the second one's our favorite. <laughs> as much as yeah. we want. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Empire oh, awesome. back in Star Wars, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Empire's Although hopefully... the better film than Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hopefully hopefully it doesn't end on a cliffhanger, or maybe it ends on a cliffhanger. It does not. But... No, it does okay, not. all right. <laughs> no some middle grade readers are ready sure. for that. Is there, is there a middle grade book that ends on a... Like, I guess your series, The Nameless city whatever. yeah second book two did kind of end on a cliffhanger yeah. um i don't know like i haven't read any middle grade series in a really long time um yeah. i mean you you have younger kids nathan like what uh what's is there a series out there that like the percy jackson series or something like that i know that one's really popular um my kids have kind of think? aged out of the middle grade yeah. market which is kind of the drag of of uh I've made this book for my daughter. And, <laughs> and now she's too old. <laughs> now she's a cool 14-year-old who's maybe not as obsessed with puppies and friendship as, uh, as as she was when I wrote it. But uh, so most of my middle grade novel 
experience is is also a bit dated because I I read what she reads. Um, mm. So now she's into manga. So she's reading mm. Witch, Hat, Witch Hat Atelier. And uh, yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. And, you and know, manga, like, manga typically ends on cliffhanger, like each volume yeah. I find like there's there's a sub substantial chunk of story, but then, you know, it's serialized storytelling. Um, so I feel like teens have come to accept that in their manga. My daughter just texted me. Oh, hi, Lily. I didn't know you were watching. <laughs> She says the the second Zeta the Space Girl book ends on a cliffhanger. She thinks. Oh, okay. Ben Hatkey. Yeah, that's a great series. Yeah. I highly recommend that. Oh, um, let's see. Um, shoot, I was. Oh, I I actually want to talk to talk a little bit about um the relationships between the girls in the book between Gabby, uh, Priya. Pri is it Priya or Priya? Priya. Priya and Priya, Priya. and Mindy. Um, like. I really loved that, like essentially they're friends and then they basically start this, build this relationship where they're tr also trying to work together and things go well, but also go horribly wrong. And I just, I don't know, I, I just wanted to to say how much I enjoyed seeing them navigate that in a way that felt just really real. Um, I don't know, I, I find that sometimes friendships in fiction can be presented as like, um, you know, like, you'll never have a, have a fight with a friend because a you, know, you don't, you don't, yeah, yeah, yeah romanticized, yeah, I guess. Yeah. And you know, like I, I just, I, I guess this isn't a question, but I, I just wanted to say how much I, I enjoyed the presentation of friendship as something that uh, you can potentially go through rough patches or, you know, you need to like call your friends out or negotiate with them or apologize to them. Um, so yeah, yeah. Just, I really enjoyed that part of the book. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. good job. <laughs> I mean, you gotta have some conflict in there. And it's like yeah. I said, I don't have that great imagination. I'm just very, uh, I'm obsessed with my kids. <laughs> I'm the observer of my, my, my kids' uh, emotional health and, and what they're worried about and, and who they're arguing with and why they're arguing. And uh, I have a good memory. So I, it's, it's, all, it's all funneled into this book. Um, so. Oh, yeah. here's a here's a, here's a question. Sorry, uh, or actually, why don't you, why don't you if you ha did you have any comments to say about the the friendship and the relationships in the book? No, you I, can, you well, can relate to I them just for sure, yeah, right? I just found it really realistic. Um, mm -hmm. and was really surprised at how well it was represented because it um, when I was drawing it, I got to kind of act and embody a lot of the those emotions, and I found them mm -hmm. so true to what. I had gone through before. I was in a group of five girls, <laughs> like odd numbers, like we chatted about. And it's just the oh, friends, of, not not siblings, just friends. Yeah, friends. like oh, I mean, okay, I never sorry. had big drama, but you could, you definitely get into those spats, you know, that you would have to face and confront eventually. And it's like a, you know, everybody just ends up loving each other afterwards because you know your best friends were your world at that age. It was really reassuring when she gave me that feedback on the script that I told convincing <laughs> Girl, <laughs> yeah. relationships. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was good. And and she sold it, right? Like, I think that's, yeah, key, absolutely. Obviously. Yeah. She did all oh, the really, yeah. I just wrote some dialogue, but yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that, <laughs> this is my, my dumb question. Uh, Nathan, I, I am just assuming that maybe that your kids have read the book. I mean, even if they, they are a little a little old for it now, but did they read it and then confront you maybe about any parts that were a little too oh. true to life? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I, Lily. I, I mean, Lily definitely recognized a lot of things uh, in the book. Okay. She's like, this. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> but I don't know how she ever called me out by it. She was bemused by it, maybe. Um, she mm -hmm. was interested in it. Um, I knew when I started it, just because I made comics for so long, how long comics take to get made, that by the right. time it came out, she wouldn't be the market for this book anymore. She would be right. too old, you know, 14, 15. Um, so she, she was involved every step of the process, right? Like she, mm -hmm. she read the script early on. She saw Michelle's early uh, character concepts, designs yeah. and concepts. Mm -hmm. And I you know she read the, the thumbnail PDF. And, she uh, helped flat. She did, <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. yeah. yeah. First summer I had her doing flat colors. 
until she got bored of it. <laughs> oh, and <then> she <laughs> Which is not long because it's a very boring job. She drew some dogs. Yeah. She, she did. Drew, she, yeah, did the, she did. She did the dogs yeah, on, on the whiteboard the... on Mindy's whiteboard. I think. No. Oh, on the whiteboard. Yeah, yeah those were all on doodles. The names. But oh, okay. Name. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. There it is. There it is. So it's. I don't know if you. There we go. There. So those little those, puppies? Yeah, those dogs. Oh, those, okay, right. Those are her drawings at the time. That's adorable. <laughs> so she, she's a co co artist on it. She's know? like, I want yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think it bothered her. If it did, she was always too good to let me know. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, every now and then. So I don't often. I mean, I don't know the book that I have coming out in in August. Right on my horse girl book. That one is. There's parts of it that are definitely based on real life, and I'm a little like. <laughs> and have you have you let uh, have you let the people who are well in there know about the book coming out? Or? No, because well, not this one, um, because uh, there's there's an event in the book that that is based on a childhood experience I have, and and I I have no idea where that person is. Like we didn't yeah. we didn't remain we didn't remain friends. Right. Um, but I did a book called Friends with Boys that was mm -hmm. um, a little bit inspired by my real life and my re my relationship with my brothers. And I mean, it was based on like high school stuff. So by the time it came out, we were all adults, and they were fine with it. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like, you know, it's it's a line to negotiate. It's like, yeah, you want to be inspired by people around you. And I, I feel like it is part of part of our jobs as authors. But at the same time, you don't want to, I don't know, portray falsely or um, hurt the people who inspire you. Yeah, it's yeah. such an interesting conflict. Like one of the, you know, the axioms yeah. of writing is to write what you know. And, mm. you, you know, know the people in your life and, you know, the relationships that you have with them. And... Mm. Of course, when you're when you're thinking of stories and people and relationships, you draw from your own experience, and and you want to do that, but you also want to be respectful of those people and those mm -hmm. relationships, and not yeah. just like cannibalize <laughs> or or misrepresent. Just what, dirty laundry. What, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And memoirs like Raina Telkemeyer's books; those are based on her own experiences. Yeah. El Defo is based on. Um, I have forgotten the author's name. Cece. I apologize. Yeah. Cece, Cece Bell. Yeah. Yes, based on her experiences as well. But yeah, it is. It is like your perspective as an author, and yeah, it's a it's an interesting line to watch. Faith, we have another uh, question. Uh, oh yeah, can you, yeah. Can you tell us about your upcoming book. Oh. Right on? <laughs> this isn't my book launch. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, I have a book coming out from First Second Books uh, called Right On, and it is about a young woman uh, who writing is her life. She's I've been a horse girl her entire life um and uh she rides at this one particular stable but then she ends and she has a best friend who rides and a best friend who is finally getting her very first horse for the for the very first time um but then she has a, a horrible fight with her best friend and she leaves the stables and starts riding at another stable and then ends up having conflict with the other riders there um, but then also discovers that you can be passionate about riding and also have a, other things in your life. Um, it's also uh, has something that's a little bit inspired by Star Trek as well. So, you know, <laughs> it's a little bit based on on my childhood where, uh, yeah, I grew up and I was a horse girl. I was so obsessed with horses. And then when I got a little bit older, I really started getting interested in science fiction and writing and drawing. And um, it was... A schism in my identity and you know the idea of leaving horses behind a little bit and becoming something new so sorry anyway that that is my book it will be out it in august yeah. looking forward to it uh how are we are we okay for time kim can we keep going we have one more question yep. here yep, yep we're they good? say yeah well let's do one okay. more question. that sounds good okay cool uh so we have oh we have we have two questions maybe we can quickly answer both of these yes. Um, Nathan, you mentioned how long it takes to get a comic book made. How did the journey bringing pause to life differ from Lake of Fire? And this is from your brother and Emily. <laughs> hey, <George>. um, <laughs> it honestly didn't differ that much. Um, with Lake of Fire, it was the same as with pause. I was working with uh, one person um, mm -hmm. to create this, this whole story, this whole world. And it was the same process where I wrote it. Um, and then um, Michelle, or in the case of Lake of Fire, Matt Smith drew it, and then I colored and lettered it. <clears throat> and um, yeah, and that's it. It's just it's like a two man two man band doing it. So it was it felt very very comfortable, um, mm -hmm. very similar to my experience with Lake of Fire, just a completely different um, 
best genre, I guess, to work in or, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, the process felt very, very similar, actually. Yeah. Okay. Michelle, how long did it take you to draw, pa draw and color pause? Oh, I did color pause. pause. Nathan colored pause. Oh, why did I assume you colored it? Oh, I'm so sorry. Because she's such a great colorist. Why wouldn't she? <laughs> I know. I know, right? <laughs> so how long I, did I you take I tried coloring it. Didn't end well. No. no? Um, okay. Um, but how long it took, uh, it's really hard to actually pin down. Because, there were phases. Yeah, there, we yeah, went through yeah. a phase of the Canada Council. Um, mm -hmm. grant we got and so we we first we started off with the five pages yeah we had we to did... apply for the Canada Council grant which yeah. you advised us to yes. apply for yes. okay? <laughs> thank you very yeah. much yeah no problem I'm so glad you guys got one yeah, yeah. so we applied for, we had to have that, that application and I think by May it was so we did just like a handful of pages like five pages five, or something so, yeah and then we did 50 afterwards right after we won the grant yeah, yeah. We, we got the grant in the summer in like June I think yeah and then mm -hmm. that funded the production of a really full mm -hmm. and really impressive uh pitch to publishers yeah um, yeah I remember seeing that happened. it was a lot of work yeah, yeah. Yeah, you saw you saw the pitch too, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, and yeah, it was a lot okay. of work. Like, like I feel like pitches, you know, I generally try and turn them out like really quickly because it's like you just you're not getting paid for it. You never know. But yeah. You guys yeah, did like next full color. Pages. <laughs> <laughs> you did like thirty full color pages. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and then we found the publisher, and I think we signed in November of twenty twenty. I think so. Okay. Yeah, and then that's when we more or less got going on the actual work. And then we finished the book in March, 2021. Yeah. So yeah. it's been a year. I to, yeah. 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 But normally but a year. Think, oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. Um, I think that it's like the layouts take about two months, a month or two, because that goes mm -hmm. by pretty quickly. Yeah, that's the fun part. Wait, is it a month or two months? It's only like a month, right? I mean, it depends. I yeah. Back and we, forth. Mm -hmm. it depends on how rough. And then normally I do like a page a day, or I try to do a page a day or two of the finished of things. The finished things. Yeah. And so that that just gives you however many pages there is in a book. That's how long it takes. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, th I think that's pretty fast, to be honest. You know, I, I feel like some some people need like three years to do a graphic novel, but it, you know, if you yeah. can do you can do a book in a year, like that's fast. I don't know. Yeah. I think it feels yeah. like you're coming out with one like every yeah, six months. Yeah, like what are you making? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I, I didn't. I don't know. I I have I have one out this year and hopefully one out next year. So we'll see. But I feel like it's a cycle that you can get in, like where it's like. There's like a two-year process. I don't know. Anyway. Okay, we have one more question. Um, how did you come up with the names for the dogs in Paws? This, this is asked by Christopher. It's just random. <laughs> I mean, Ro <laughs> Roxy was my dog. And then I wanted to come up with names. Well, Pickles was, was named because I wanted a name that you would not expect a massive, right. um, you know, drooly monster to have. Um, and Pickles non-threatening and um the rest were just silly you know corporal wags yeah. was my favorite one um <laughs> and then carl just like I, lo I, lo I love a dog with a human name you know yeah. like michael yeah. you know? <laughs> joshua the dog um so that's always fun <laughs> and then scraps is named because he eats scraps. everything on the floor um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that was fun that was probably the yeah fun the book was coming up with the names yeah it was tough to choose the ones you know yeah. <laughs> uh since i think i think we have oh are we out of time hi yeah i think we could oh, go on okay. talking all night yeah we could can i can i just ask them for yes. maybe a recommendation for absolutely what, is that okay yes okay please. uh do you do you guys oh. have any recommendations for what to read after pause like a, a graphic novel that you really enjoy do you think other other readers of pause will enjoy oh man I mean, <laughs> sorry i totally put you on the spot <laughs> i like i said i for new stuff probably not because mm. i don't really read a lot of i haven't bought it much recently so i just go back to all the stuff that inspired me to make a middle grade book in the first place. Anything by Raina Telgemeier, 
Yeah. You're, you're doing great, uh, especially so her good. smile and sisters. I love, I love those books. I've read those books on my own as a 40 year old man, just wanting to read something good. Um, they're so good. Yeah, they're, they're, they're great comics and the Babysitters Club. Yeah. Um, I really liked Gail Galligan when she took over um, from Raina. Mm -hmm. um, Gail's a wonderful cartoonist. Um, oh, so there's actually a kitty, Katie the cat sitter. We just oh, yeah. that. That was super that. fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cats and dogs. Yeah. Vera Brosnan. Did that just come out? Like they came out in the last couple yeah. months, right? It did. Yeah, yeah, I, know. yeah I know the people yeah. behind it. Um, they were they're so awesome. much fun. And of course, I can't think of their names right now, but that was. Uh, it is Colleen Venerable and. Yes, Stephanie Colleen Yu. A. F. Venerable and. Yeah. Oh, okay. Stephanie That's... Yu. Yu, I believe, is how you pronounce her name. Yes. Y U E. Yes. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. I'll have to check that out for sure. Yeah, yeah it's super cute. Yes, that was fun. Okay. So here's pause. Excellent. Here's the first Yay. one. Mavi sets it up. Click the green button. Buy a copy. You're going to love it. And we will have signed book plates. Yay. Kiki, thank you for joining us tonight. That was a <laughs> happy surprise. Yay, that was so much fun. Good job, Kiki. Thank you awesome. so much, babe. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no thank you. problem. Yes. Thank you, Faith. No that was fantastic. Yeah. We'll have to have you back for your first book. Yes, Ooh, thank yes, you. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you thank so much, you. everybody. Thanks for tuning in.